All right, we'll call this uh, this meeting of the Committee of the Whole to order. Uh, thanks for being with us tonight. We've got a lot of great things to talk about. Um, we will start with a, uh, I'd like to ask President Hannah to uh, lead us in a moment of silence for, uh, for Lloyd Turner. If you'd all if stand you for a minute. Please, uh, please join me in a moment of silence for uh, Lloyd Turner, who passed away Tuesday, March 17th. Lloyd was the former director of public works for the city of Sheboygan from 1997 into 2002. Lloyd was currently <clears throat> serving as a member of the Sheboygan Police and Fire Commission. Our sympathies go out to Mrs. Turner and the family. Thank you. Thank you. Please be seated. Uh, now, President Hanna, if you conduct the roll call. Warren. Here. Falk. <coughs> here. Decker. Here. Yesha. Here. Hannah's here. Heidemann. Here. Kittleson's excused. Clyde Lunas. Here. Meyer. Montemore. Aye. Here. Aye. Here. Rinfleisch. Ryan. Here. Sark. Here. Vanderwills excused for Hasslet. Here. Wangerman. Here. Twelve present, two excused, and two absent. Uh, quorum is present. We'll rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. <coughs> I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands one nation, under God, indivisible, for liberty and justice for all. <coughs> on to housekeeping. Alderman Bourne. We need the approval of minutes. Oh, as I was. Uh, I would entertain a motion to approve the minutes of the meeting of January 29th. So moved. Second. Moved and seconded. Any discussion about the, uh, the minutes? All right. All in favor of adopting uh, and approving the minutes, say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. On to housekeeping. Alderman Bourne. Uh, the first thing on the agenda, uh, number one, is RO number 3360809 by the city clerk, January 5th, 2009, submitting a communication from Alder, Alder Person Bourne, along with an article from the journal Sentinel, uh, li uh, an article entitled Limiting Property Tax, uh, will be no easy feat. Motion to file. <clears throat> Second. Any discussion? Uh, Alderman Bourne. Under discussion, uh, the reason I brought this, first of all, to the Finance Committee and now here tonight was way back in January, uh, we were getting indications that we were going to have a very difficult budget situation for 2010. <laughs> And that's really all I want to say. The, uh, the, the difficulties have just gotten worse, and uh, we're going to be covering that tonight. <clears throat> Any other discussion? All in favor of the motion to file? <clears throat> Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. All to person born. Uh, the next two documents, uh, RC number 3360809 and RC number 3370809 are actually the same from two different committees. Your committees to whom was referred RO number 2640809 by the city clerk submitting a communication from Alder Person Born along with, the, with an article from the Milwaukee Journal Sentinel, Water Pollution Standards, uh, a struggle, recommends that the report of officer be referred to the Committee of the Whole. Make a motion to file both documents. I'll take them together. Any discussion? <clears throat> Alderman Bourne. Just a couple of moments. We talked about this uh, a little bit in, uh, in the uh, Public Works Committee. Just a couple of things uh, uh, that I wanted to mention. This article had to do with water pollution standards set by the DNR, and the culprit is the runoff pollutants such as dirt, oil, and bacteria that wash off streets and flows into local water bodies. The DNR is targeting runoff as measured by total suspended solids Regulations approved in 2002 call for a reduction of 20% in total uh, suspended solids this year and 40% by 2013. To meet this 
40% uh, standard, cities will have to boost street sweeping and remove dirt and other material from the road roadways. Uh, in discussions at the Public Works Department, in order to be in total compliance with these DNR regulations mm -hmm. by 2013, and if the DNR goes ahead and enforces these to the letter of the law, we could, according to uh, Mr. Bittner and Mr. Beeble, the city of Sheboygan could be faced with uh, five to seven million dollars in cost uh, to be in compliance by 2013, which means we would have to bond uh, 2.3 million dollars a year in 2010, 2011, and 2012. So the reason I brought this forward, and it's even more important now, this is another thing that Mr. Hansen and the Finance Committee and the older persons are going to have to keep on the radar screen because the financial situation that we're already in on top of possibly having to borrow $2.3 million for an unmanded, unfunded mandate from the DNR puts us potentially even in a more tenuous position. So if Mr. Hansen does not already have this on the radar screen, which I'm sure he does, it's another thing we have to be worried about. Thank you. <clears throat> Any other discussion on this item? All in favor of the motion to file? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Uh, motion to file carries. President Hanna, you have a couple uh, under deer abatement. Yes. Uh, item Roman numeral 4 and Roman numeral 6, uh, RC 410, 08, and 09, and council item 2452, I'd make a motion to refer to the Committee of the Whole of the new Common Council. Second. <clears throat> uh, any discussion? We have a motion to second. Any discussion on the uh, motion to uh, hold over to the next Committee of the Whole. This continues to be an <coughs> item of interest to a great number of citizens, uh, so I think we want to try to get this on the agenda of the Committee of the Whole as soon as possible in the new council year. Okay. Any other discussion on this? Motion to uh, hold? No, or motion refer? To refer. Refer? Okay. All in favor of the, uh, of the motion? Aye. 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 Uh, opposed? <coughs> motion carries. And finally, I'd entertain a motion on RC 440-0809. Motion to file. Second. A motion and second under discussion. Alderman Decker. Um, give me one second. There you go. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, I personally like to hold this or refer it to the next uh, committee of all meeting as well. Um, I think uh, in all fairness to the taxpayers, I would like to do a breakdown in some numbers and uh, you know, look into it a little more thoroughly before we uh, decide anything. Thank you. Any other thoughts on uh, right now the current motion is to file. Um, is that an amendment to that motion, Alderman Decker? Okay, then we have a, a motion to amend that from a file to a whole. You can't, amend, you ah. can't amend that. We'd have to vote on the first one. Okay. So. I'd like President to weigh in. I'd, I'd support Jeremy's uh, motion. I would prefer that this uh, be referred to the Committee of the Whole of the New Council. Okay, any other discussion? On the motion to file, uh, all in favor? No. Opposed? No. All right, motion does not carry. I'd entertain a different motion. I'd like to make a motion to refer to the next Committee of the Whole meeting. Second. Motion to hold to the next uh, uh, Committee of the Whole and seconded by President Hanna. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. <clears throat> and that we've moved already. All right. So now under item six, I'd like to, to frame this presentation up for us tonight. Um, at the last Finance Committee meeting, there was a lot of scrambling going around as we prepared for the meeting and sort of a realization that the financials were not as we anticipated. The good news about this, and it's a, a, a no small testament to the new director of finance, Hansen, and the chairman of the finance committee, is that normally we probably wouldn't be looking at this stuff until this fall when we start thinking of 2010. Through the foresight of those uh, two gentlemen and, and uh, eventually the finance committee, um, they're looking, instead of just looking in the headlights, they turn the bright lights on and they're looking farther down the road. And uh, we saw a great big br brick wall in front of our financial sports car moving down the highway. Um, so what we'd like to do tonight, this is an effort at transparency with the Sheboygan taxpayers. 
we know some things that we've learned earlier than we normally would. And we can't move forward without sharing that with the Sheboygan taxpayer. So with that, um, I'd like to open the floor up to who's kicking it off? Uh, Chairman, uh, Chairman Gisha of the Finance Committee, please. Thank you, Chairman Powell. There you go. I was warned by everybody to try to be loud. So anybody please uh, speak up. Um, before we get started tonight, I wanted to remind those uh, at home or those who are here and, are, and then eventually end up at home that the information being presented tonight by our finance director, Terry Hansen, will be available and currently is available on our city website. You don't have to kind of dig through to find finance. It's right on the front page. And that's at www.ci.sheboygan.wi.us. ci.sheboygan.wi.us. <clears throat> that is, again, in uh, adding on to what Alderperson Bauk said, uh, an effort at transparency and getting out all the information to as many people as we can. And, and that's why we're here tonight. Um, as it was discussed, a lot of times information like this doesn't happen to uh, make its way out historically until the end of the year during budget time. And this affects every one of us. Uh, the information we have tonight or what we're seeing will affect every department head, every department, and most importantly, the people we serve in the city. And uh, we need your help. And that should be the theme of our straight talk tonight. Why is this different than other years? Uh, it's different in a lot of ways that, that you're going to see detailed tonight. It's different because we have different mandates that are put on us by the state. We have uh, different fees that are now being charged to the city. We have increases in health insurance. We have, we have, we have. And, and uh, those, again, will be detailed by Director Hansen tonight. I, I encourage everybody to look very carefully at that and then print it out at home if they can. My remarks will be brief, but I did want to bring up the fact that as a council, we've done some pretty amazing things over the last two to four years. We've restructured debt. We've dealt with an unfunded, multi-million dollar, unfunded state pension liability. That saved the taxpayers millions of dollars in potential interest expense, amortization expense, if you would. We've reorganized departments which and left several positions unfilled to try to address this in anticipation of um, this ball rolling our way over the last several years. Uh, this council and previous councils have exercised some, I think, very straightforward fiscal discipline and have taken on the tough tasks. And uh, we've done some health insurance revamp. Uh, and those were big issues that had a lot of zeros at the end of it that this council addressed and has helped us to this point. However, things now are a little different. And they're different in our shared revenues are being decreased. Our Wisconsin Retirement Fund is hitting us with mandated ex additional expenses. We're in the middle this year. We will be involved with contract negotiations with our labor partners. Uh, we have levy limitations. Um, Director Hansen will explain if we have certain levy caps. Levy is all the money that we're able to tax the citizens of Sheboygan. There's certain things where if we keep the levy at certain levels, we get extra money from the state. It's a big balancing act that a finance director goes through. And I think the citizens, and as well as some of us in the council, need to understand how that works and how one thing often affects another. Our increased debt exposure, we talked about that at Monday's council meeting. We discussed the possibility of changing, and I believe that is a resolution on the floor here this evening. It was referred to this committee uh, regarding lowering a uh, potential $5 million debt expenditure. And we have general inflationary costs. That's, that's the overview of where we're at today. The details become shocking, and I think the Finance Committee felt sufficiently shocked at, at what this all means to us, and Terry will detail it to you. I'm not a good PowerPoint guy. Uh, I, I tend to try to equate things as to how you live your life. It's much, much different than, than how you do run your households. 
if the money you have coming in is stagnant, like our tax base is, we're not, we don't have a growing tax base, but your expenses keep going up, eventually something's got to give. And I believe 2010 is that give. And I, we are at that point. I'd like, there's two points I'd like people to keep in mind during this presentation from Terry regarding dollars. One, point number one, a, there's a significant di difference between one-time expenses and annual recurring expenses. Our issues are, are recurring expenses, things that happen every year, every year, every year, and roll and become more expensive. Our issues aren't painting the lobby of City Hall with a couple of buckets of paint or buying a vehicle or one-time write out the check stuff. It's the stuff that has trailing expenses, as we like to talk in the Finance Committee, uh, that, that sometimes you see and sometimes you don't see that add up to your tax bill. The other point uh, that I think will become clear through this is that there's a significant difference between delaying expenses and eliminating expenses. Terry will show you graphically how, where your money goes, where your tax dollar goes, and some of those issues are issues that if we keep growing segments of our tax liability, what, what we pay for as a city in, in certain services and, uh, and personnel, et cetera, uh, we're delaying an inevitable. We, we can't have certain areas grow because it eats up the rest. If 95% of our, 85% of our money goes to pay in benefits and 15% go to everything else, that everything else is bonding for streets. That everything else is bonding to put sidewalks in, mini storm sewers. The stuff we discussed Monday night becomes difficult or impossible to do. And I, something I'd like to be clear on in our straightforward talk and straightforward communication is, we can't solve this. We have a terrific finance committee. Alderperson Jean Clayunis, Alderperson Marilyn Montmayor, Alderperson Bourne, Bauk, and uh, I'll toss myself in, but I learn a lot from those people. They've been on top of this. Previous finance committees have been on top of this, and we have the help now of a wonderful finance director as well. But your finance committee can't fix this. Your council can't fix this. Your department heads can't fix this. This is going to be hopefully the beginning of communication throughout the city with our citizens, with our labor partners, with our other non-represented employees, with the council, with the finance committee. Your government can't solve this. We need the input and feedback, and that's what our attempt is tonight, is to just start, to lay out for everybody, here's our situation. Now let's all start working together to find out a solution. We'll know what the reality is by what you're gonna see here tonight. How do we change this reality? And the reality and fairly shocking scenario is, even if all city employees took a 0% pay increase for three years, even if we raise the taxes to the expected maximum of 3%, which is what's proposed in the governor's budget, even if we did all that, we would still be hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of thousands of dollars in the hole beginning in 09 or 2010. This isn't anybody's fault. Your city workers are wonderful people, wonderful dedicated people. Uh, you have wonderful dedicated leaders here in this room. This, is an op this isn't anybody's fault, this is everybody's opportunity. And I think that is our hope this evening, is that we come together, pull together. We have now the, we're lucky to have the direction of a, of a marvelous human resources director in Angela Payne. She's gonna be key to this. All department heads are gonna be key to this. Everybody's free to open up and, and, uh, and have at it. Finance committee is wide open for this stuff. So please, this is about everybody. It's not about me or Terry or our committee or this council. It is about everybody. And we welcome you to come to the table to help us solve these recurring expenses, to help us deal with health care, to help us deal with things. Um, frankly, if you let politicians deal with it, it gets ugly. But if we all deal with it together, maybe we can solve it in a way that everyone benefits. And ev by everyone, I mean the citizens we're all here to represent and care about. And I know we all do. So that's the overview. Uh, Director Hansen, uh, he gets to do the PowerPoint stuff. Uh, uh, we'll give you a presentation on some numbers. All, often numbers are difficult to follow in these situations. Please uh, bear with us. They're important. 
And then uh, Alderperson Hannah, uh, Council President Hannah has a couple of words. So thanks everybody for participating and please let this be the beginning of participation and not just in tonight after this meeting. Thank you. Well, to start off, when I was preparing this, I was trying to find the best way to present this and thought of different charts, different graphs, but I think the best way is just to start off where we're at and what we're going to see. And here you can see our 2009 budget. We're budgeted for $36 million in expenditures for 2009. Really? That wouldn't be good. <clears throat> okay, and then looking at the Wisconsin Retirement Fund, the state um, passed some statutes requiring that whenever there is a loss, those losses need to be recaptured over a five-year period through incremental increases in the participation rate of the employees and of the employer. In our case, a majority of the contracts have good coverage where the city pays a majority or all of the employees' contribution up to a certain percentage. And um, depending on how those rates get passed to us, we'll be looking at about $195,000 increase in Wisconsin retirement contributions um, for employees retirement package. And <clears throat> that is just year one. It'll compound over five years and we'll, we'll show that a little bit later. And that number of 195,000 is, as Alderman Gisha highlighted before, if everybody took a 0% increase, all salaries frozen, steps and across the board increases were zero, we'd still be looking at $195,000 increase in expenditures. Next is tipping fees for garbage services. Um, the state increased some of their fees and that'll relate to about $100,000 in increased costs to the city for disposing of waste. So we'll be looking at that expense as well. Now we're looking at some of the estimated. Traditionally in the past, the across the board increases were around 3%. Um, and what the number I factored in here is if just took a figure to 3%, but that doesn't include step increases that are built into contracts. So with the step increases and the across the board, you could see up to a 5% or even more, depending on where all the employees are at. But at just a 3%, we're looking at $607,000 potential cost in additional pay. Um, then if we compound the Wisconsin Retirement and FICA taxes on top of that, we'll be looking at another $118,000 in expenditures. So that 3% increase in contracts averaged out would end up resulting in about um, $725,000 in additional costs. Then we move on down to insurance. Insurance last year, we took about a 16% increase in insurance premiums. This year, and this is a very conservative estimate, which is probably too conservative. This is only a 5% increase. So if we face a 10%, we can double that $322,000 amount to 644,000. So this is kind of a best case scenario for the 322,000. We'll see how things um, level out after this 2008 clean period is. But right now, I would anticipate it'd be at least 322,000 in additional insurance costs that we'll be facing next year. Other operating expenditures, just factoring a 3% inflationary cost on that would result in $164,000 in additional costs. With that, that brings our total anticipated expenditures at this point. This isn't anything else that's coming on down the road. This is just what's identified here, and this is just general fund costs. This doesn't include the debt service that the council's going to be dealing with as well but we're looking at $37.7 million for our anticipated expenditures. The bad part about that is, even if we had enough revenue to fund this, the state has an expenditure restraint program that caps the amount that your expenditures can increase from one year to the next. It's anticipated that it'll be about 3% of your previous year's expenditures. If that is the case, if the 3% holds true, we'll be looking at we, our expenditures being capped at $37.3 million, which means we have to cut $420,000 off the top to keep our expenditure restraint aid. And that amount of aid is about $1.1 million. So if we go over that expenditure restraint amount, we lose $1.1 million in funding. So then that affects you on the revenue side. A lot of what Gisha was talking about, or Alderman Gisha was talking about, in tying everything together, 
you, you, you think you solve a problem in one, it can lead to an issue in another. So um, even if we could afford all of those expenditures, we'd have to reduce our expenditures in order to keep that aid. Then looking on the revenue side, in 2009, we balanced the budget, so we're looking at $36.2 million in revenues for general fund. Due to the elimination of the stormwater fee, and the, we drew out the money uh, that was remaining in there for the last operational cost that got shifted to the general fund, we have $615,000 that will be eliminated from the general fund next year as far as revenues coming in. So we'll have that coming out of the revenues. Next, our state aid reduction, which is tentative, it's a very preliminary number, this may change, is slated at 41,000, which isn't much, but we have to keep that on our radar to make sure that it doesn't increase or that they don't change their mind and it becomes a million dollars. Next, on the levy limit, this is an estimate of 3% on the general fund levy that if we raise the taxes and the max that the state would allow us, we could only generate an additional $435,000 in taxes. So once we add all that together, we have $36 million in revenues that we're looking at. And from the previous slide, we had $37.7 million in anticipated expenditures. That leaves us at a deficit right now of approximately $1.7 million this early in the game. So as things continue to trickle in and, and um, this number could grow as well. Looking at how our expenditures break out in the general fund, trying to figure out the best way to classify them as far as the type of expenditures. We have salaries and benefits is 85% and other operating expenditures at 15%. Um, I think preliminary last year at one time, um, the finance department said it was around 90% and 10%, but we calculated this a little more, uh, looked at it very closely, and it is 85 and 15% without a doubt. So um, that is where we're at right now. And this is not just a one year issue, as Alderman Gisha highlighted, just to look at the Wisconsin Retirement Fund increases, over the next five years in the catch-up period that the state's pre preliminary rates came out at, if we had a 3% increase in salaries per year, this is what happens to our Wisconsin retirement contributions. It starts out in 2009 of about $2.7 million. And then 2010, it'll be over $3 million. And then in 2014, we'll be approaching the $5 million mark. So... Ultimately, our Wisconsin retirement, just the new additional percentages that are, will be required by states, the statute, will be an additional $1.5, $1.6 million annually at the end of 2014. So 2015, if the rates stabilize, we'll still have that $1.6 million in additional costs that we'll be having to cover. And with that, I don't want to bore everybody too much with the financial information. There's a lot that um, I think the Finance Committee will be presenting to the Council, and if there's more forums like this, we can present in greater detail at that time. But um, this gives us uh, kind of a brief snapshot of, of what everybody's looking at. And um, with that, I'd like to turn it over to Alderman Hanna. And Again, I want to thank uh, everybody at home for watching tonight, and I want to thank everybody that's here in the audience. Uh, this is a very, very important issue, uh, and it's excellent that we've got this kind of participation. As we've, as we've heard tonight, these are not one-time issues. Uh, the way the cards have been dealt with us, uh, these challenges are going to continue. We need to come together as a community for a long-term solution. It's important at this stage, early in the year, that we understand the situation. There's going to be very, very tough decisions. Uh, these are going to have impacts not on just the city departments, not just on the citizens, uh, but the business community at large. Uh, and these are, not, these are not challenges that are just Sheboygans. There are cities all across Wisconsin that are going through the same challenges. And I would, I would hazard a guess all across the country going through these challenges. I'd like to remind us that this is an opportunity
for us to work together. As Alderman Gisher pointed out, our labor partners, our department heads, the non-representative employees, and the citizens, we need to come together. This is not the time to focus on blame. This is the time to work as a team, come together with realistic uh, suggestions, hammer them out. It's early enough in the year that we've got an opportunity. Uh, we've got a new administration that will be coming in. Uh, we're going to have to hit the ground running on these issues. And uh, with that, I'd like to, to close and again thank you all for coming. Uh, I think there will be some uh, questions from the committee members. Thank you, President Hannah. Before we uh, open it up to the, uh, to the elder persons, uh, I'd like to be clear that it's, it's not about blame. That's not what we're talking about tonight. But it is about clarity. And there are some facts up there tonight that, that make it clear that the way we are structured, the way our inflows and our outflows are structured, it's our neighbor's money. It's not our money. It's not the council's money. It's not the mayor's money. It's not the department head's money. It's your neighbor's money. And as we figure out how to get through this, we have to, it'd be a whole lot harder to raise people's taxes if we had to go knock on people's doors and say, you know what, Ed, uh, I'm your alderman and uh, we're raising your taxes and your share is 240 bucks. Can I have it, please? If we had to do that, it'd be a whole lot harder to get people to raise taxes because there'd be face-to-face -face accountability. And there hasn't been a whole lot of face-to-face -face accountability in years past. We keep sending people to Madison that think it's okay to raise our taxes bring in these uh, different arbitration mediation and arbitration laws. And over decades, a couple of decades, handful of decades, uh, we have built a system that has got us to the place where we are today. And it's not, that's not casting aspersions. That's saying, look, the pie graph is what it is. 85% of every dollar we spend, 85 cents of every dollar we take from our neighbors goes to fund uh, salaries, benefits, and FICA taxes. And so, when the slice of the pie that's available for discretionary things is only 15%, that makes it hard to do the things like pave in Indiana and giving relief to our neighbors on Indiana that need some help and things of that nature. So I uh, just want to be really clear that we're talking about our neighbors' money, and it'd be an awful lot harder. We'd feel an awful lot worse about this if we actually had to go, you know, kind of stick our hands out like we probably should have to and say, fork it over. It's what we need. So with that, I'll open it up. Who'd like uh, to speak first? Uh, Alderman Ryan. Thank you, Chairman Buck. Um, this is, uh, you know, not a pretty picture we have here. It's a pretty bleak situation, but it's also an opportunity for us now um, at this time. It's, it's basically a forced opportunity for us to, uh, to, to solve our financial problems. Uh, it's a time that everybody will have to come together. Everybody will have to work together. It's basically an opportunity to get our city running as efficiently as possible. Uh, and uh, we'll, we'll be forced into this, into this situation. You know, we, 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 we're not like uh, the federal government, we can't print money. We have to take our budget and we have to make it work. It's a situation where it's, uh, it, 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 it'll, be, it'll be painful for a couple of years. You know, we're still, you know, we have there a uh, 400 and some odd thousand dollar uh, tax levy increase for the general fund, but we're still in the upper 16th percentile in the state and property taxes right now. So do we want to, again, raise taxes and property taxes another 3%? I think we tighten the belt, we figure out how to work through this situation for a couple of years until we can once again start building our tax base. Um, to tell you the truth, we are looking at, on here, we're looking at $1.7 million in, a, in an anticipated deficit. In my opinion, this is more like $2.1 to $2.2 million that we're looking at right now. Because I don't believe that raising taxes is a good option in this situation. I think that we need to look at everything that we can in the city. We need to uh, basically uh, do an efficiency study of how we operate in the city. And uh, whether it's through uh, operating more efficiently, technology, whatever it takes, we need to, we, we need to cut back. And uh, we need to do it together. We don't want to see people laid off. Um, I, I, I do believe that if we freeze wages, I think, I think that's important. Um, we, get a, we, get a, we get a wage freeze. We, 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 
excuse me, we rework our uh, health insurance plan. You know, we have one of the most generous health insurance plans on the planet, I guarantee you, uh, both public and private sector. I know we have some wiggle room in that health insurance plan to save some money. We need to do that. Uh, we need to, to look at uh, retirement in the city. If we have people of, of retirement age that are eligible for retirement, we need to look at that. We need to look at whatever we can uh, to become more efficient without raising taxes in the city. I, I, I honestly do believe that. Um, if we were at the 50 percent percentile in the city on property taxes, that would be one thing, or even 70. But we're up, when we're up uh, to, to the, the highest 16th percentile, I don't think it's an option. I think it's, uh, we need to, we need to uh, tighten the belt. We need to do it together. And uh, we, need to, uh, we need to figure out the solution together. And uh, I thank you. Thank you, Alderman Ryan. Alderman Hassel. Thank you, Mr. Chair. A uh, question for Terry, if I may. Uh, just on some of the numbers you put out there, Terry, I was looking, the salaries, you had estimated, if I heard you right, a 3% increase. Could that, um, you know, we've got a number of new fire and police personnel come on here in the last 18 months or so. Um, considering the aggressive step program that's in place there, uh, couldn't that number easily be double? I mean, going from a, so we could be looking at 1.2 million. We've got, I think that 600,000 is very, very conservative. Yeah. You know, like I said, I, from what I've seen in past numbers, that could easily be double. Um, so that's, uh, that's very interesting. Uh, also, have there been any preliminary discussions on insurance with our insurance provider? And is there a chance that we could actually flip that around and, and create a positive there through a savings? Is that in the realm of possibilities? You want to come up, Terry? Yes, we have been talking with Eric Serrano and Humana and always looking at ways that we can try to improve <clears throat> and reduce the cost of the programs. Um, when it comes to specific benefits that may be negotiated in the, into the contract, um, you're kind of bound by that. So, so you do have some room to do things, however, you don't have free reign to do whatever you want to try to save the cost. You do have to still follow the parameters that are set forth in the union contracts. Okay, that's fine. Uh, I guess then the million dollar question is from your vantage point, maybe it's too early in the year, maybe that's, this isn't the question we're looking for tonight, but do you have some ideas where the biggest opportunities may lie here in the next eight months as to how we bridge that gap of 1.7 or maybe more likely two and a half million dollars? Um, I think- Are there any there, obvious areas? I think um, all the low-hanging fruit as far as typical stuff that, that governments do to balance the budgets has already been picked. Um, we will, I, there are some ideas, some, some progressive thoughts as far as different things that we could do, but I, I think um, those should be vetted probably through the um, committee format before it gets introduced because they're not, they're raw ideas. They, they haven't been vetted through a, through a full discussion with multiple people, so. Thanks. Uh, thank you, Terry. Uh, and, I, and I'll just uh, reiterate what Terry and Alderman Gisha said about the low-hanging fruit. Uh, this current mayor and the current and past couple of councils, um, they haven't just picked the low-hanging fruit, they've gone out and got some really tall ladders and picked some of that fruit too. Um, I would, I, you know, one of the questions that a citizen might ask is, hey, you guys have always pulled this out in the past. Uh, you know, you guys, every fall, you tell us how bad it's going to be, and uh, all of a sudden you guys manage to, to pull it out. I'd ask Alderman Gisher or Hanson to answer that question. Again, reiterate, what's different this year? You guys always pull, pull a rabbit out of the hat. What's different? Alderman Gisher, you want that one? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Alderman Bauck. <laughs> um, it's different, first of all, Terry's graph previously showing <clears throat> the, the contributions of the WRF by itself alone would have caused red flags. We never had that before, that significant trend up that you all saw. Uh, that alone would have left me screaming into my pillow in the middle of the night, thinking about. But adding that to the rest of these new expenses and Frankly, just at some point, 
you get to a tipping point where there's not enough money left over, you know, we should have a high percentage of salary and benefits. We're a service industry. We're going to have that. But it gets to the point where there isn't enough, enough nickels left to do the things our citizens expect us to do, like fix, put new roads in or sewer projects and things like that. And so that bubble just kept kind of pushing along. It's kind of like a baby boom bubble that everybody talks about. And, and a lot of us in this room and in, in committees have been talking about this coming for years, but the economy with that new chart of Terry showing uh, Wisconsin Retirement Fund looking to replenish themselves um, on the backs of local taxpayers, thank you, um, just thank you, <laughs> uh, accelerated what was going to happen anyway. Um, maybe this moved us a year or two earlier than, than we're, if we didn't have some of those uh, additional surprises. But we were going to be here. We were going to be here. I have neighbors calling me about stuff we talked about on Monday night with the sewer projects. I got homes are getting flooded. We can't afford a bond for the money to do it because our percentages are off and our taxes are already high enough. And because of what Terry explained with those expenditure caps, even if we decided to go way up, we lose it on the front end because the state then penalizes you on the shared revenue side. So it's a box. It's a box, and I think uh, the Finance Committee saw that, and uh, we thank you for giving us the opportunity. Terry could have done 50 more slides, you know, and, and really gone into detail, but I think it gave a good idea of a snapshot of the moment, and uh, we're asking for help. Okay. Thank you. Jim, I think you were next. Uh, uh, Vice President Thank you, Mr. Warren. Chairman. <clears throat> As we go forward, uh, I just want to mention and uh, just reiterate a little bit what Alderman Gisha said. I think we've got a couple of excellent new department heads to help us through this. Uh, uh, first of all, Terry Hansen, our finance director, uh, or as some people refer to him as the head bean counter. I think the city's beans are, are in good hands. I think Terry is going to be just an excellent asset to help us through this. And also our new uh, human resources director, Angela Payne. It's my understanding that Angela, <coughs> Angela has hit the ground running. And I think her expertise in labor relations are going to be a huge asset for people on both sides of the table as we go forward with these labor contracts. So, Angela, keep up the good work. And uh, I think uh, the labor negotiations are in good hands on both sides of the table. Then I do have a question that I got from a constituent before I left. And I think I did give him the right answer, but I want to give uh, Terry, uh, ask Terry, uh, Don from 10th and Florida called me before I left home tonight and said, what if we told the state to go fly a kite? We're not giving them any more Wisconsin retirement money. I think I gave him the right answer, but Terry, would you just want to tell Don on 10th and Florida what would happen if we told them we're not giving them any more money? <laughs> To keep it quite simple, I don't think that's an option. Um, I think they would find ways to, to hit us with penalties and, and interest assessments that would make it um, very desirable to pay that versus pay the consequence. So um, that is not an option in, in, in what I know of it. So, But we need that kind of creativity, right? <laughs> <laughs> uh, Jeremy, I think you were next, but I may, no, okay. Uh, all the person, Clarence? Thank you, Chairperson. Um, uh, the, are there any TID districts coming online for taxes in 2010? Nothing, huh? So there's no investment coming back to us. 12. Okay, all right. Um, I do think, it, yeah, there are some things that maybe we have to bring back, um, user ideas, uh, people who are using city f services, uh, that we have to somehow have them pay more for those services, especially if they use them more than someone else. Um, but we may have to get in some new um, techniques or procedures for paying for the services we take for granted and that are really um, very generous to the citizens but maybe have to be paid for more directly. Thank you. Alderman Sir. Thank you, Chair. Uh, I got a call from uh, one of my constituents uh, currently that is planning on expanding his business. And one of the concerns he has is that the city in some respect, has to have a good bonding rate. How is how's, well, this, this scenario we're going into affect the bonding rate for the city attorney? 
The um, holding back on the on the debt is probably a good idea in trying to hold up the bond rating. Um, maintaining a healthy general fund balance is also key in that as well. Um, the other thing that um, I'm sure there will be even more scrutiny from the bond rating agencies now. So you just have to make sure that, that things are good. We don't want to be um, utilizing fund balance to pay for reoccurring expenses. We want to make sure that we just apply sound financial guidance through this, through this time to make sure that the bonding rating agencies know that the council and the community understand the situation that everybody's in right now and that we are taking measures to, to take care of the, the financial health of the community. So holding the line on some debt is probably not a bad idea in this time and then also making sure that we do not overspend or, or create reoccurring expenditures that we cannot continue in the future. Okay. Thank you. Terry, maybe we're starting kind of the bonding process, or at least getting that data. Maybe you can explain to people that that's kind of an ongoing thing, or, or that you're on top of that particular feature with our bond council. Yes, we work closely with the bond council, and um, typically what happens as far as the rating and making sure everything goes well, um, we get interviewed by a couple of bonding rating agencies, and basically they, they put us through the ringer, talk to the finance director, the deputy finance director, and then the bond council, and we discuss everything that's happening within the community. And it's not just a financial number item too. They'll look at um, what's happening within the community, looking at the demographics, looking at the unemployment rate, which is not a good thing that came out in the news this last week. But they look at the overall picture. So even if we do things financially well, they do look at the overall well, the overall health of the community and make sure that that is sound as well too so that the taxes that are being assessed are affordable for the people within the community. Yep. Uh, Alderman Heidemann, you're next. Thank you, Chairman. Um, when I came into office, one of the first questions was asked when I, when I campaigned, they said we had this vehicle maintenance fund that had gotten to enormous $8 million. I'm kind of wondering where that fund is now or if any of that money that's in that fund can be transferred to help do some bonding to get those sewer projects and things uh, taken care of. Excellent question. Um, Alderman Gishan. Uh, Terry can uh, uh, back me up on this if he wishes. Uh, I've had calls people saying, oh, the $8 million is gone. You spent it all. We have not. <laughs> Technically, all $8 million are still there. We borrowed against about 50% of it. But that borrowing comes with an IOU and those payments are being made. Actually, they were started this year in this budget period by department. Uh, anything that was ever, any dime that was ever taken out of there is going back in with interest, I might add. So the $8 million is there. Uh, as far as spending out of that $8 million for sewer project or, or things like that, how that would affect our bond rating if that's part of our general, uh, uh, our general fund balance, will be key, and, uh, and Terry might be able to answer that better. But for those who call and say, oh, you spent the $8 million, well, we didn't. Uh, it's there. And Alderman Gish, if you'd continue on that, though, when, when we say things like the money's there, but it's not, that gets confusing. By that, what did, where did uh, some of it go, uh, Oh, uh, and, the, and what's, why is it being paid back? Sure, the massive, the largest chunk of it, $4 million, I believe, dollars, went to pay previous pension liabilities from our workers that we were behind on that were going to cost tens of millions of dollars worth of interest if we kept this current borrowing program with the state. So it went to salary and benefits, uh, frankly. So uh, and, it, and it went, and it's being paid back proportionally by department. Um, so that's the vast majority of it has went back to the state of Wisconsin to pay off a debt. Thank you. I understand. I supported that. I wanted that money transferred to pay that debt down, but that still doesn't give me an answer uh, as to where that fund is right now. Is it at four million, three million? Um, yeah. And what would what is okay and what wouldn't be okay? What would be smart and not smart? For as far it? as that fund, I believe. <clears throat> I, I don't have the most accurate numbers from 08 yet. We're still working on finalizing everything there as far as transfers and, and interest income. But 
We, um, I believe it is around the three million mark cash balance. The one thing with that, um, the, the amount that was borrowed for the unfunded pension was to be paid back after we're done paying the bonds that were issued by the state and from the state. And that, um, just to clarify, that we weren't really behind on payments. Somebody asked the question about that earlier. We weren't paying, a, it's not that we weren't paying a bill. We were paying a bill, but then they calculated and said, there's not enough coming in to fund what's come, going out. So we need to, you have this unfunded pension liability. It's not that we didn't pay the bills. So somebody asked that question of me yesterday. So I just wanted to make sure that we clear up that, that notion. We do pay the bills on time. Um, and second of all, if, if we use that for other things, th that fund was set up originally, set up based on a rate that captured the depreciation of a piece of equipment, and that depreciation rate was charged back to the fund, the departments that use that piece of equipment. The problem was <clears throat> it was a very good equation set up. The problem was it wasn't executed as it was planned. <coughs> Instead of saying that a piece of equipment hit the 15-year mark, we should replace it, we held on to it. So then that fund balance grew and then we continued to charge that higher rate. So then that increased the amount of money that went into it. So right now, um, I would have to talk to Bill Bittner, the public works director, to see where we're at as far as the equipment and what, what shape it is in, in order to say that money should be used to replace equipment shortly or if the equipment is in good shape, then that money might become available or viable. But the main thing is we're gonna be reviewing that equation this year, making sure that we have a good calculation that we can execute and make sure we stick to the plan so that the same thing does not happen again where we get a large balance that is just sitting there idle. Thank you. Thank you. Alderman Bourne, please. Thank you. Another constituent that I talked to last night was calling for her mother and she lives down in the area where the sewer project is gonna be done uh, down uh, east of South, uh, down, uh, east, uh, east of uh, South High School on the Washington and South 10th area. And her question was, is any of the federal stimulus money that's gonna be coming down from Washington DC uh, going to be able to be used for, uh, for stormwater projects and that type of thing. And I told her, my answer was, I didn't think full details of the federal stimulus program has reached the local limits, uh, the level, the local level. So I'm asking Terry if he's got any further update or possibly Paula Enders, if there's any update on the availability of, of uh, federal stimulus money to possibly help with some of these projects that we had planned that it looks like we're not gonna be able to go ahead with. Paul, that's in the audience. Yeah. Or Terry. <laughs> Thank you. Um, I think what you, re you know, your response back to your constituent was correct. We don't know at this point. What we do know is that some of the funding that's coming into the state, there are categories. Um, and anticipated amounts that will be coming from the American Recovery and Reinvestment Act to the state of Wisconsin. It looks like those dollars are being, ch are being channeled into existing programs. We know that WISDOT had a phase one application. Those were um, two different types of funding. Um, it was actually three. We qualified for two enhancements and STP Urban. Um, we submitted six projects, they weren't funded. For this phase two, we will be submitting those projects again, along with other projects that qualify. It doesn't look as if flood mitigation qualifies for those programs. It doesn't mean though, that there won't be other programs that may come up that they would qualify. And we have been watching that as closely as what we can in cooperation with the departments and in particular, the finance department. Thank you. And uh, maybe what I could mention is that the fifth and New York project that's going forward, we will be submitting an application for funding, but it's part loan and part grant. And we don't know that we'll receive it or not. Even though the project will be underway, the DNR has told us to submit it. 
Thank you. Uh, Bill, was your question for, no. for Paula? Okay. Um, okay, uh, Alderman Wangaman, you're next. Uh, thank you. Speaking of phone calls from constituents, as Alderman Bourne has had, I'm sure my partner, Alderman Decker, has been getting phone calls too, and of course the problem is Indiana Avenue. Is there any realistic hope that these people can look forward to any kind of relief there at all? Is there anything that we can offer them? Some kind of a, uh, a hope that possibly that some of this cost can be defrayed because people there are, are in trouble. And they're very, very concerned, they're very worried. And uh, I had a lady crying on the telephone the other day, you know, and I, I really don't know what to tell her. Uh, what shall I tell these people? I'll invite other more learned people to get up and offer a longer answer, but I can, we can remind the citizens that the council and the finance committee just Monday night voted to lower the amount of interest we charge when, when people finance it through the city. Now there's only kind of a handling charge, a 1.5% uh, handling charge on that down from, I think, oh, probably four percentage points. It was from seven down to a point and a half over, which is probably a three and a half or four percent cut. Um, so the council has done what it can by, by lowering the level uh, at which we'll loan money to citizens who need that kind of help. That's a baby step. Uh, and now, Terry or Paulette, if you have other thoughts on it, I'm not going to put you on the spot, but if you have some thoughts, I'll invite you up. Okay. So, uh, you know, all, all of the citizens, uh, especially those in Indiana, uh, that's why creativity is needed. Uh, um, I, I got a call after yesterday's press went out. I got a call from a constituent that mentioned um, there's a quote in yesterday's press from, uh, from Sam Guerin that says that... Um, represent city unions, uh, the concessions would be made uh, based on what actually happens in comparable communities and blame the financial crunch on the city's past efforts to cut taxes. If they hadn't cut taxes, if we hadn't taken less of our neighbor's money in the past, they wouldn't have as many financial issues as they're having today. I'd like to ask either the chair of finance or uh, Terry Hansen to answer the question, is the financial difficulty we find ourselves in the next year and the years after that, is that because this mayor and the previous council and this council cut taxes two or three years in a row. I, Alderman Gisha. If Terry wants to weigh in, uh, I think he would probably say that's a policy decision, as he often says when you get into these discussions. Uh, well, what are the numbers say? What are the numbers Last year's tax reduction was $105,000. I think we all saw the graphs. $105,000 doesn't mean anything to our issues. It's one, goodness, uh, percentage-wise, it's, it, it's a minuscule amount based on the percentage of our issue. Uh, so I would say personally the answer is no. The second part of that is uh, I think Alderman Ryan mentioned that we're in the top 18 percent of, of, of uh, high taxes in the entire state of Wisconsin. So I think that's a tough sell to the uh, to the constituents who are all having their own personal financial difficulties because of what's going on in the state and in, and in the nation. Um, I, you certainly can't blame it on the citizens for wanting more of their money when they're already the one of the 18th highest taxed uh, communities in the state. Okay, I'll take that as a no. <laughs> <laughs> and, and Terry, you, you, no? Okay, does that cover it? Okay, so the financial difficulties we find ourselves in are not related to the mayor and previous council's efforts to cut our neighbor's taxes. Um, who's next? Alderman Verhassel, please. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, you know, as far as that comment there, I mean, I, I hope there's no regrets within this body about what we've done over the last three or four years in our efforts to cut taxes. I mean, that, to me, that'd be absurd because it's, it's about the constituents, not about feeding the city budget monster, so to say, with, you know, keeping it fed based on the, around the back of our constituents. So I think it's uh, kudos to this body that we've done what we've done over the last three or four years to that comment. I guess my question though um, is going back to the American Recovery and Reinvestment Act, there's been some projects submitted and so on. Would it be fair to say those are all outside of the budget and would have no impact on the numbers put up here by Terry? At the end of the day, if, even if we were to cash in on that, would maybe Terry or either one of you, but would they have any impact on the the 010 budget? Well, what we originally did in that first round during phase one, we looked at projects that weren't funded through the capital improvements program. So in the second round, we were going to put in, I mean, if, if 
there's a vote taken to eliminate street resurfacing, if a project is eligible, which means it has to be a, a collector road or higher, we would put that into the phase two under WSDOT. So on the capital improvement side and that money that you know, you'd know you have as a, uh, an ongoing expense for however, you know I don't know what the exact amount of years would be, potentially it could impact that. Um, but, but we don't know, it's not a guarantee. I guess I'm thinking it's a, it's a variable expense that we could probably go without in a tight budget year anyway. Some of these projects. Um, be, I would just say as uh, the projects typically that department had submit are, are necessary projects. And you know I, I realize that there, it's a tough financial situation right now, but I've said it to a couple older persons that um, at the rate we're going, we'll never replace all of our streets or do all of the infrastructure improvements that we have to undertake as a city. Um, and so, you know, we, I know that I think through Public Works it's been mentioned that, you know, maybe you, work, you look at other funding sources, the grants, the stimulus, CDBG, and um, as a department head, I've already been doing that. And if we can fund it with another source, we will try to. But, you know, I truthfully don't think that we'd be able to, you know, to make up that gap. That's what I was thinking. Alderman Ryan, you're next. Thanks again, Chairman Boak. You know, we, we can't go forever without doing capital improvements. We know that because uh, every year our streets deteriorate more and more. And it looks like this year, with the exception of a sewer project, our, our, that'll, that'll be a, our main uh, capital improvements project. Other than that, we're going to be patching potholes again so that they can again uh, come back out this next winter. So we know we can't do this forever. You know, it's, you know, what we're looking at right now is to make it through probably the next two years. If we can make it through the next two years and the economy picks back up and we can possibly grow our tax base in this city, um, you know, that's what we're looking at. Basically, I, you know, I don't, I don't think we, we're, we're looking five years down the road to be in this situation. We're looking at the next two years that we need to make it through. And I, I don't think this, this council should regret holding the line on taxes the way we've done to this point. Because, I mean, if we, if we did the uh, customary 3% uh, uh, increases in taxes every year for the last, uh, for the last uh, four years uh, that we did hold the line on taxes, I mean, we'd, our taxes would be 10% more than they are right now. So if you're paying $6,000 in taxes on your home, you're paying 6600 so I mean, we've uh, you know we shouldn't regret doing what we've done. I mean, we're in a situation now that we just have to figure out how to how to be more efficient in what we do, and uh, you know it's that's that's where we're at. That's that's reality, and that's that's what we need to deal with. So and I think it's Alderman Gish just said early on that that answer isn't going to come necessarily from the 16 people here. It's not going to come from right. whoever the next mayor is. It's going to come from a lot of people, uh, department heads, citizens, all of us working together. Uh, you know, I, I know there's a lot of uh, people have strong opinions on whether some of the turnover that's happened uh, in the departments has been good turnover or, or not good turnover. That all happened before I was uh, before I was an alderman, so I can't speak to that. But what I will say, I will express my absolute confidence. Um, this mayor has made some really, and, and the Civil Service Commission has made some really fantastic hires. I'll, I'll echo. Um, I'll see Alderman Boren's praise and I'll raise him uh, one Bill Bittner and one Tudor Lee um, because those four uh, along with Terry Hansen and, uh, and again Angela has been here a very short time but already making a big big difference in how we look at 2010 and beyond. Uh, so this mayor has done a great job of leading, the, uh, putting in great talent at the department head level and that'll be important and I know whoever the next mayor is, uh, both of them, either of them will work very hard to turn those new department heads into a team. And that's, what, uh, that's really where the answer is going to come from. Alderman Gisha. Nope. Okay. Uh, Alderman Wagaman. Just one small comment. I'd like to be the devil's advocate here for a moment. As much as we claim we were doing the, these Herculean efforts, and I'm sure that many of these Herculean efforts were taking place in trying to make ends meet. The plain fact of the per thing is, our citizens don't agree with us. They don't think we're doing a good job. And this can be clearly demonstrated in the last election. That was very clearly pointed out, that the citizens are unhappy. So what are we doing wrong? Why are they unhappy? I think it's something that we have to look maybe into ourselves as well. Uh, 
there's a great deal of discontent out there. And I hear it. I hear it everywhere. And of course, uh, the ballot box clearly demonstrated that in the last election. Thank you, Alderman Wagaman. That's a great lead in. Uh, I think it's really clear. Uh, again, decades and decades of sending uh, certain people to Madison that then vote to strengthen certain laws and programs uh, that over years and years and years add up to complicated things. So as Alderman Wangeman points out, elections have consequences. And uh, so vote your interests on, on election day. I think it's fair that even, even Sue Richards would echo that, right? Vote your interests. Yes. Uh, Alderman Gisha. Uh, just to be clear and maybe dovetailing up after what you're saying, our issues go back decades not two years, four years, or six, decades. Um, we, government isn't set up like business. If business, you had an income statement like this, and a bal our balance sheet's fine, so our income statements is the issue. If you had an income statement like this, you would immediately make some changes. In government, you can't be agile like that. The system is set up against you. We have to make some changes. Unfortunately for us, that's why we're trying to start it early and get this discussion going here in March, because if we started in November, we'd never get anything changed, because government moves so slow. So uh, we have the same challenges um, from a, we have a huge challenge from an agility standpoint. So anybody who has any thoughts or ideas, uh, uh, you better bring them forward quickly. And, um, and, and I agree with, uh, to a point with uh, Alderman Wangaman, um, if the citizens weren't happy, imagine raising their tax taxes 3% plus. Uh, you, they might be, uh, I don't think they'd be real cheerful about that either, considering their current personal situations. Excellent point. Alderman Ryan, you're next. Well, thank you. Uh, no, I, uh, speaking of our, our, our new department heads, uh, I've sat down several times with, uh, with uh, Terry Hansen and uh, also with Dave Lutsky, our uh, city assessor. And uh, I, I, I must, uh, uh, I, I must concur that uh, the, the younger department heads that we have now, they think outside the box. They've come up with some ideas that obviously we don't want to, you know, the, as, as Terry said, they're, they're pretty raw right now. Um, but uh, they, they, they think a little differently than this is the way it's always been done. And uh, working together with them and the various departments around the city, I think they do have some, you know, there's no silver bullet out there, believe me. But they do have some ideas um, that if, uh, you know, the council, you know, can, can discuss them and add to them, um, that there are some small solutions out there to some of our problems. And I, I think that, uh, you know, we, we need to, uh, we need to uh, be, to have the ability to listen to them and to keep an open mind on some things that can be done that are, that are a bit outside the box. And, uh, you know, I've asked them, I said, has any other city ever done this? And, and they said, we don't know. We just came up with it. So, I mean, it's, there's some good ideas that they have, and, I, and I, I, I'm looking forward to them presenting them in the, uh, in the, in the near future. Thank you. Alderman Hassel. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Can I ask, uh, Terry, is there any reason, you know, again, with the unprecedented, difficult financial times, is there any reason to believe that we're going to have a higher rate of defaults on property tax as another sore spot, sore spot coming to this budget? It hasn't been commented here, but... That, that's a good thing for the city, is if we do not bear that risk, the county bears that risk. So when the, the taxes are, are levied and the county sends over the city's full payment, and then it's up to them to deal with the delinquencies on that. We do have to worry about the personal property taxes. That we are liable for, or not liable, but we hold the bag for that if, if they do not get paid. But um, otherwise, the, the regular property taxes, the county has that risk. Is there any history to go off of from a personal property tax standpoint to know what to, might, to expect here in eight months? Um, I believe traditionally we collect about 98 to 99% of our personal property taxes. I guess what I'm saying, if we looked at any tough years in the past, is there any historical data to go back to, whether it be the early 90s, early 80s? I, I have not done that analysis. And, and um, now that you mention it, it'll probably be a good thing to look back and see if we have seen a dip in that. And um, I'll be happy to report that to the Finance Committee to get it to the Council. Thanks. Okay. Um, at this point, the other persons have no more questions. I'd uh, consider inviting department heads. Are there department heads that have questions they'd like to ask? 
Okay, then at this point, uh, please, uh, Attorney McLean, if you'd come up to the mic. get the tape on. <laughs> um, I would just say that, uh, you know, there are, there are positive things. I think Terry has given the gloom and doom scenario as to what's going to happen with the budget. It, my understanding, that's the governor's proposed budget. It hasn't been finalized by the legislature yet. Uh, I know the League of Wisconsin Municipalities, which represents our interests, in Madison is lobbying the legislature to try to reduce some of those costs and that may or may not happen. I think the uh, Wisconsin Retirement Fund uh, shortfalls is, is a given. I think the levy uh, limit or the shared revenue increases are a given, but uh, uh, the things like the uh, recycling increases and the tipping fees and the environmental fees for uh, municipal solid waste I don't know that that's a given. Uh, I know the league is supporting uh, a, cons a consummate increase in recycling grants back to municipalities uh, in some proportion to the increased fees. So, uh, you know, that's that's one aspect I think that can be dealt with. The other thing, I, my comment would be as far as this, we've been talking about the operating budget of the city. <clears throat> You know, I'm concerned that you, it, it doesn't necessarily equate, I don't think, that the capital expenditures necessarily uh, are, go hand in hand with the operating budget. Uh, the city is based on infrastructure, and that's what the city does, is infrastructure. And that, we're an old city. That infrastructure continues to deteriorate over years. And to say that for two years, or three years, or five years, that we're going to just defer all the maintenance and the upkeep. Um, I think all you're ending up doing is maybe uh, creating the situation that you're complaining about is uh, dealing with the short-term solution with the short-term answer and not looking at the longer term of the city. Uh, the city's going to be here a long time. Uh, those costs and those improvements are not going to go away. They're just going to get worse. And, uh, you know, from my standpoint, one, one important program I can point to is sidewalk improvements. Now, we don't earmark a great deal of money each year to sidewalk improvements, but we do allocate on a systematic basis, I think it's $100,000, $120,000 we've been allocating towards repairing uh, sidewalks. Uh, every year, People trip and fall on the sidewalks, they sue the city. The biggest defense the city has is we've got a program in place, a systematic program, to replace the sidewalks. Now, yes, maybe we're not keeping up with the deterioration, but at least we've got a program, and from a liability standpoint, that's very important. I think judges and juries recognize that, that you can do, you can only do so much, but you should be doing something and not just burying your head in the sand and saying, you know, we don't have any money to do these things. Um, so as far as uh, the final point, I guess uh, I would make, uh, I don't know if you've seen the Newsweek this week, but the cover is, uh, you know, Uncle Sam wants you to spend your money uh, to stimulate the economy, to get people to work. And uh, What's being stimulated is interest rates. The interest rates are probably as low now as they've been in the last 40 years. So as far as doing projects and capital projects, if you're tying operating deficits or operating costs to capital projects, you know, two or three years from now, yeah, you can do the project then, borrow then, but it could very well be a lot more expensive in borrowing expenses two or three years down the road. Uh, I guess I'll admit I'm not a finance person, um, but I've been, I'm one of these people who have been with the city for a long time, and I do hear every year we've got a tight budget situation, and I think, I believe that's true, and I think it's getting worse, but I just don't feel that the council can just totally ignore 
a reasonable capital improvements program for a number of years. Uh, I personally don't think it's prudent as a resident of the city, uh, but obviously that's the decision that the council makes, not me. So thanks. Thanks, Attorney McLean, and, and Attorney McLean does a good job of looking out for the liability interests. Uh, uh, Terry, you want, uh, want to speak to that? And I'll concur with a lot of what Steve said. We've been focusing on cost reduction on a lot of this and, and tax impact, and it's all about the affordability to pay. One of the things that I've seen with the capital improvement program in the short time I've been here is that it's moved away from capital improvements. It's in, in this one that we had, we had a lot going towards stormwater funding. Almost, almost $3 million was initially slated for stormwater funding, $2.7 million. That's a lot on something that was never, ever in that program before. So that took a lion's share. And then through the, through the years with the accounting and the budgeting and trying to get things to balance, stuff that should be funded in the other operating expenditures in the general fund were shifted over to the capital improvement plan where now we're funding buses, software acquisition, website upgrades, those items in the capital improvement plan when that's intended for your actual hard infrastructure was the original intent. In this one, um, we talk about the roads. The roads, if we don't do it, they, they'll deteriorate. But chipping $500,000 towards roads doesn't get you very far. And that's what was proposed in this capital improvement plan. So with what Steve was saying is maybe part of that could be looking at the capital improvement plan, saying we need to focus on hard infrastructure, stuff that will improve, make people want to come here, make businesses want to come here with nice streets, nice sidewalks, those hard tangible assets and then find a way to fund the other items like the software, the buses, the um, equipment for the buildings through another mechanism and through our general operating and building in those one-time um, expenditures again into the general fund would be ideal. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Uh, you know, w one thing, Sam Guerin did come to a finance committee meeting and lobby very, very smartly for exactly what uh, what these two gentlemen are saying is that if you let the infrastructure deteriorate too long, if you don't keep up the general maintenance on the infrastructure, then when you play catch up, that that's a lot uh, harder of a financial thing to make. Uh, but at the end of the day, we're, uh, as Alderman Gish has said, we're a service industry. We're in the service business. And that's uh, by, by virtue, you know, that's, uh, so we are personnel heavy or we're personnel intensive, people intensive. And that's so that the challenges we face aren't by virtue of any selfishness on their part, aren't, aren't you know, uh, by virtue of anything like that. It's by virtue of the fact that when you look at that pie chart, people are 85% of every dollar we spend. Those are people dollars. Uh, and so even if we didn't do anything differently, if we didn't ask them to work any harder, we didn't ask them to come up with any ideas, we have to come up with a million dollars a year. It's not just a million dollars. It's a million dollars this year, and then two million the year after that, and then three million the year after that, and four million, so that it's a, a, a new million every year just to do the same old stuff. And I think that's the, uh, that's the unsustainable part, that uh, we've gotten to a point as a community where the kind of growth we've been experiencing is just unsustainable anymore. Uh, Alderman Hassel, please. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, one last thought here, I guess, as I was looking at the page three, the 2010 general fund numbers, um, and going back a while now here, we all, re we all understand we have an ambulance service now, which was sold as a, gener a generator of revenue. I'm surprised not to see that as an offsetting number there, benefiting us on the bottom line. It is. Where? Where is the line item, I guess? I think he's talking about tonight on the slides. It is incorporated. As an offsetting, we're expecting, what, $200,000 or something like that? It, it is already projected for 2009, that increase that we anticipated. In speaking with the fire chief, Lestusky, we already incorporated that in the 09 numbers. We weren't projecting an additional amount yet for 2010. Um, we're going to see where those 09 figures start rolling in. So basically, if we are going to see an increase in that, we don't want to count the chickens before they hatch. We want to make sure that we're dealing with good, solid numbers in that regard. So that's why it doesn't show as an additional. It was already incorporated into the 2009 budget. So it's offsetting the total fire budget? 
No. How's uh, it showing up, I guess? I in, in the general fund revenues in 2009, um, 2008, I, I can't remember the numbers exactly, but we did increase the ambulance contribution to the general fund to offset some costs. That was incorporated in 2009. When, um, speaking with the fire chief, he did not feel comfortable raising it any higher than what we projected for 2009, and we haven't had the discussions on where he thinks it'll be in 2010. So that's why it's not shown as a specific line item in 2010 in these numbers. These are only additional monies or subtractions that we foresee in the upcoming year. So right now, I haven't had any indication from the fire chief saying our 2010 revenues from the ambulance will be even more than they are budgeted for 2009. So that's why it's not presented as such. I don't have the original projections here from a few years ago, but were we, correct me if I'm wrong, were we projecting something like three to $400,000 by 2010? And that's what's in the budget for 2009. Okay. Um, regarding that particular subject, let's just look at 2009 where our net income was roughly 200000 mm -hmm. If you were to eliminate that, you'd have to find two hundred thousand dollars somewhere else, and that would add to that one point seven million dollar figure. So it's a that's a net positive to the taxpayers, not a net rev negative. The other one that always keeps being brought up is tourism, uh, tourism department spending money on tourism. People should understand not a nickel of general fund money goes into tourism. It comes from the room tax dollars, There's and that means not a nickel of citizen taxpayer money. Correct. So uh, people should. You know, some of it is urban legend, you know, uh, and just so that's clear, so you can kind of knock some of these things off. Off, so you're really looking at what the core issue is. Okay. Uh, I've got no more lights. Again, I'd uh, offer it to the department heads. Any other questions from the department heads? Okay. Then at this point, uh, thank you uh, to the gentleman uh, and lady who presented. Uh, good knowledge. We're not done yet. We're on uh, item number seven. Uh, again, uh, for these next uh, four items, the decision we need to make now as a group are. Do we make a recommendation vote? Do we uh, file it? Do we agree to meet before uh, April 10th? We could meet as this committee of the whole on these topics by April 10th, or do we hold it, uh, uh, refer it, I guess, over to the, uh, the new committee of the whole? So the next item is uh, Council Item 2432, uh, Vice President Bourne. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, 2742 was a, uh, came up on my radar screen back in early March and uh, this has to do with the, uh, an article from the Journal Sentinel, statement, uh, State Retirement System to Cut Benefits in May. It's kind of a short article, so I'm going to just highlight some of, some of it for the, for the people here and at home to kind of explain how we got in this quandary with the State Retirement Fund. For the first time in, in its 26-year history, the Wisconsin Retirement System will cut the size of retiree monthly benefits starting in May. The cut, was, the cut was expected based on unprecedented stock market volatility and dramatic declines in stocks <clears throat> through much of last year. Members of the system's core fund annuity will see a 2.1% decrease in their monthly payments. Uh, the employee trust funds, uh, those payments went up 6.6% last year. Uh, participants in the variable annuity will see a 42% decrease in the payments they received related to that fund. Generally, generally speaking, no more than 70% of the retiree money payment can be affected by the variable fund performance. And then it goes on to say about 145,000 retired state, local government workers and teachers will be affected by the cuts. About 35,000 of them at some point in their career elected to allocate some assets to the all stock variable fund and will be affected by its much larger decline. And this is what came on my radar screen when I saw this article and I brought it to the attention of our finance director. Taxpayers will also likely take a hit. The department of employment trust funds has warned municipalities, counties, school boards, and the state, and the state that they will have to boost contributions to the pension fund that covers approximately 550,000 active 
employees and retirees. Governments on average contribute about 10.4% of their payroll to the Wisconsin retirement system, a figure that will likely increase in 2010 because of the stock market declines. The board will meet in June to set the contribution rate increases for 2010. Preliminary projections show that those rates will increase roughly 0.8%, which would boost the amount the local governments would have to contribute to 11.2%. So this, as I said, this came on the radar screen uh, back in early March. I reported it to the finance director and uh, Mr. Hansen reported to the finance uh, committee at one of our meetings and this again is one of the reasons why we're here tonight. I'll make a motion to file. Second. Okay. Any discussion on filing this item? Okay, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Aye. Motion carries. Uh, next item is uh, council item 24. Oh, let me get you. It was based on that item. Oh. You're faster than I am. Gotcha. It is a resolution amending resolution 125 uh, approving the 2009 to 13 capital improvements program. Alderman Gisha. I was under the impression we amended it at Monday's meeting and it was sent to us amended. Is that accurate? Yes. So Correct. That language. I make a motion yep. to, um, to send back to the council um, with a uh, approval or favorable recommendation from the committee of the whole on 2444 um, as amended. Uh, there's a motion to uh, send uh, the council back a uh, uh, recommendation to approve. Is there a second? Second. Second. Uh, under discussion, Alderman Hassel. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I guess <clears throat> in subsequent discussions that I've had regarding the addition that we put in there was the software package for police and fire. I've come to the understanding that it's not necessarily priority number one or an absolute must on their part. Uh, and with that, I'd like to also offer up an amendment that we strike the software update reference and replace it with mini storm and flood mitigation as a use for those additional $250,000. Is, is there a second on that amendment? Uh, seconded by Elder Person Montemayo. Uh, under discussion on the amendment only, uh, the, uh, to strike, and what's the figure again? 150? 250. 250. 250. 250. To strike $250,000 uh, and, and shift the purposes of that $250,000 to flood all storm water, whether it's mini or, or... Or any types of flood mitigation. Okay. Um, Alderman Montemayor. Oh, uh, I, I'm waiting to speak about the general oh, amendment. Oh, I'm sorry, thank on you. the amendment. All the person, Gisha, is that? Yeah, on, the, okay. on the amendment, thank you, uh, Chairman Bout. Um, we just heard Terry Hansen say we shouldn't be doing flood mitigation on the capital improvements fund. Uh, the 800,000 I would have struck, frankly, but I would have been interested in striking, uh, uh, presenting that point of view. If we hadn't already had our up to our neck and it had left bids out and had contractor meetings and we would have been in a financial um, predicament with that. Uh, the 250,000 for the police software is just like the 800,000. We've had a year plus of meetings with the county. They've inserted it into their budget we insert it into ours, we have then a, we have then a, um, a, a, an efficiency update for the safety of the citizens that's legitimate and real. And we've already invested five times this amount in time uh, getting to this point. And our partners in the county have stepped up. If, and, and I feel it's necessary for us to step up because of our co a commitment we've made, much like the eight hundred thousand dollars was a commitment we made. So, I will not vote for the for the amendment because it's doing exactly what Terry suggested we didn't do, and uh, and uh, it would really be a problem with our relationship and our partnership with the county. Okay. Any other discussion on the amendment? Okay. Then, oh, Alderman Verhassel, please. No, just uh, I guess following up to that, I mean, it's surprising that we would on one hand support the $250,000, I'm not saying we, but certain individuals would support the $250,000 for police and fire for an update for software that we currently have, something that's a little more convenient, maybe a little more uh, advanced, but we already have a, a very good package in place. This is, you know, an, an update is what it is. We're not, we're not going from zero to 60 here. We're already at 60. We're just looking to go to 65. 
Um, so I'm surprised that we would support that, but then when we've got matters that are real to constituents, here we are in the spring, a lot of flooding going on, basements underwater, and we've had a number of years without any efforts in this area, any dollar spent, and here we are saying, we'll take care of our own here in city government, but we're gonna leave the constituents, I'd like to say high and dry, but actually it'd be low and wet. <laughs> And Alderman Gisha. Thank you, Alderman Verhassel. That, those are very good points from Alderman Person Verhassel. And nobody is choosing ourselves over the citizens. That software serves our citizens. Uh, we have a crappy software system between the city and the county, frankly, if you want the truth. Um, and we have already invested money in it by not taking it to the next level. We're going to throw away all the work and time and money we've invested in it to this point, which is poor government and poor use of taxpayer money. Um, I believe we need flood mitigation, but we need to do it as Director Hansen suggested in a different manner and not with the capital improvement program. Okay, and thank you, and Alderman Bourne. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. <clears throat> uh, Alderman Hanna from the Public Protection and Safety Committee, could you, or if there's a representative here from the police department with knowledge, could you give us kind of a, a quick synopsis on what this software where the improvement is going to be? Do you have me on? Yeah. Okay. Uh, and I'll just give you a quick synopsis. What it's going to allow us to do is to facilitate better communication between the county, the sheriff's department, and our police department. Uh, it effectively brings us into the, to the new century in terms of communication and response time. Uh, so I think it, it's a good investment in the safety of our citizens. Uh, it's another step forward in sharing services between the city and the county. I just think it's very important that we, we keep that ball rolling. Uh, that's where we're gonna see real savings down the road is working more closely with the city and the county. Uh, and this is, this is a very hard example of, of work we've put in over the last nine months uh, to make us work together better as a team. Thank you. And all member Hassel, you're next. Thank you. Um, <clears throat> you know, and, and I see, certainly appreciate the efforts that everybody's done, and I, I can understand that if you put in a number of months researching this, but I, I don't know that if, if we take the notes, all the information that we've gathered, and the decisions, put them on the shelf at, until a point that's more appropriate, whether it be eight months or 12 months from now, I don't know that that information is going to age that quickly that it would become irrelevant. I, I, I just think it would be more appropriate to wait till 2010 and approach again that update. Not, we're not talking about a, a basic installation here, we're talking an update. Let's just take that information, which is again, very well appreciated and uh, use it next year. Okay, we've got two more lights and then we'll, we'll have the vote on the amendment. All the person claiming us. Thank you, Chairperson. Um, I believe Terry Hansen said that uh, software shouldn't be in capital improvements either. I mean, uh, we're in a rock and a hard place. Mm -hmm. Both of these things shouldn't be in capital right. improvements either the stormwater projects nor the software project. So I don't know. I, uh, <laughs> public protection, um, people's uh, protection as well from the elements. I, I don't know. I, it's a hard decision to make. It really is. Thank you. And Alderperson Ryan, you're last. Uh, for, for the sake of cooperation with the county in the future, um, there were many, many months put into this with the city and the county cooperating for a long-term goal, which will be sharing more services in the future, um, which is one of, the, one of the vehicles that we're going to have to operate more efficiently in this city. And it's, it's, you know, it's one of those things that we can do in the near term. We can get real results out of it um, by sharing uh, equipment, et cetera. Now, for us to spend that much amount of time on this, cooperating with our friends at the county, and now to say, okay, we're not going to do it, I think is sending the wrong message. Um, I believe at this point, I mean, I agree, this doesn't belong in capital improvements. Storm sewers don't belong in capital improvements, or mini storm sewers. You know, basically everything in capital improvements we're talking about tonight doesn't belong in capital improvements. Um, but this is the only vehicle we have right now because it was put into capital improvements to finance it. And I think we're sending the wrong message on cooperation with the county when we spend many months coming to an agreement and then we turn around and say, okay, we're not going to do it now. Um, in the future, in the near future, we have some great opportunities with the county if we can continue to work together to save some real money for the citizens. 
And this is, you know, we're sending the wrong message if all of a sudden they've already obligated to this, we've obligated to it, and now we don't finance it. So I'm going to stick with the original plan here. Okay, thank you. Uh, voting on the amendment to repurpose $250,000 away from uh, the software technology and toward, uh, toward some sort of water abatement uh, programs. On the amendment, we'll do a voice vote. Wait, a, yes, a yes vote moves it from software to uh, mini storm sewers. Uh, Bourne, no. Uh, Alderman Balk abstains. Decker. Gisha. No. Hannah votes no. Heidemann. No. Clayunas. Yes. Montemayor. Yes. Ryan. No. Surik. No. Verhassen. Yes. Wangaman. No. <clears throat> We have uh, three yes votes, we have one abstention, and eight no votes. Oh, eight and three. Okay, so the, uh, the amendment, motion on the amendment fails. Uh, so now, any discussion, any continuing discussion on the resolution itself? All the person wants to mayor. Um, thank you, Chairman Balk. Uh, this is all enlightening and frightening tonight. Yeah. However, I find it very difficult to vote against bonding to use the citizens' money for the good of the citizens, for their streets, their sidewalks, and their flood. I have to vote in favor of somehow figuring out how we can use the citizens' money for the good of the citizens. So I will be voting no on this, this motion, this resolution to reduce the bonding for the good of the citizens. Okay, thank you. Any other comments on the on 2444 itself. Alder, uh, uh, Vice President Bourne. I feel very bad that I can't vote for this, uh, this $5 million capital improvements uh, bonding because I did vote for it in finance, but that's before all of the other information came out that we talked about tonight. Uh, Alderman Heidemann uh, and I were down at, uh, at, on 10th and Washington this summer those people were so happy that we we're finally going to get some relief for their flooding down there. And we both feel awful that we're apparently not going to be able to do this. And it's for the simple reason, as I explained to a couple constituents, and as I think Alderman Gisha said the other night, there is not money in the checkbook. There's no money of the taxpayers to use for this. We can't repay it. It's, it's that simple. And I feel terrible after all the years my constituents have gone through with this flooding that we can't take care of it. We just simply can't. So I, I'm, I'm going to support the, the $1,050,000 reluctantly, but that's all I can do right now. And just to be clear, back me up on this, uh, whether I'm right or wrong, it's not about, we could bond for as much as we want to bond. We could bond for the $5 million. It's about our ability to pay the interest back on the bond. So it's about if we borrow more, we can't afford to pay back the interest on that money if we did the sidewalks and, and, and the stormwater and all that. That's, it's about our inability to pay the interest. Uh, any other comments uh, before we move to the vote? Okay, then uh, uh, President right. Hanna, if you'd uh, call so a voice I, vote. I, so I, an approve, or uh, an I vote, is to approve 2444, which is to set it at a million fifty, one million fifty dollars for capital improvements. Fifty thousand. One million fifty thousand. Sorry. One, one million, million fifty million. Fifty thousand. One million fifty thousand. Decker. Gisha. Aye. Hannah votes aye. Heidemann. Aye. Clayunas. Aye. Montemayor. No. Ryan. Aye. Sir. Aye. Verhassen. No. Longerman. Aye. Bourne. Aye. Nine ayes. One abstention and two no's. Okay, so the, uh, the motion to recommend to the council to approve 2444 passes. Uh, the, uh, the last uh, item in this agenda item is council item 2458, 
uh, referring a couple of ROs to us regarding concrete sidewalk programs. Alderman Gisha. Uh, I move that they be uh, held over to the next Common Council. Next Committee of the Whole of the Common Council. Okay. Uh, to, to hold it. Okay, there's a motion and second to hold this over till the next Committee of the Whole in late April, um, early May. Uh, and second. Under discussion, Vice Th President Thank Board. you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, could we get a dollar figure on what this sidewalk construction, construction project is? Was it 100000 bucks or... I don't have the exact number in front of me, but it was about 50 some thousand dollars. It was a portion of the project. And if we wait and decide this, you know, if it comes back in early May, we decide it by June, will that be too late to execute that this year or? We, um, we can confirm that with the, con I'm not quite sure how long the bids are good for, but I, I don't see that as being a problem. Okay. Okay. So given that, uh, any other discussion on this item? Uh, Alderperson Montemayor. Uh, thank you, Chairman Buck. Well, I'm glad to hear that, Paul Andrews, because I assumed that 2458 was dead if the bonding was dead. And that's not the case? But you think you'll be able to find the money somewhere? No. Um, that's a part of the, the, um, the debt issue. So if, if you vote at council to not borrow the funds, then that would that project would go away. Right. Yeah, I'm I'm just checking I just meant from the standpoint of will the bid still be good in the contracts and so you might want to just refer that back to council along with your capital improvements recommendation. Because it can't be done. It's over with. Correct. Well, if it passes council. Right, okay. That's there you go. I would like to withdraw my motion. To uh, if the second will yield uh, to um, to carry for the carryover to the next committee, the whole, and change that into a uh, um, a motion to recommend to the Common Council uh, 2458 uh, to uh, uh, negative denial fashion. <laughs> I'm not sure what the motion that verbiage is. <laughs> motion to deny. Thank I think you. that's a legal term, isn't it? Is that a legal term? It's like I'm thawing. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so you would like a motion to file this? Very good. Thank you. I'll, I'll go with five. <laughs> Would anyone it like sounds to better that? than saying deny, don't do, go away. Is there a second to file? Okay, motion to file. Uh, the motion before us is to file item 2458, which then would not, we, we would not be able to move forward with these two particular sidewalk, or this one particular sidewalk project. Any discussion on this item? Uh, Alderman member Hassel, you're... Okay, so if we uh, come, this coming council meeting, if we approve the million fifty thousand, the sidewalks are going to happen? Uh -oh. No. They won't happen no matter what. Nope. Right. All right. Unless you amend the amendment to include the sidewalks <laughs> and start it all over in the council. But I think based on what Paulette said, we let this, fi we file this tonight, then if the million fifty gets denied and we're back to talking about more capital improvement money, we could always bring this back up again. So where was this being supported in the first place? Uh, Public, Public Works, Works was recommending it. As part, was it part of the CapEx program at one point? The bonding. It, it was part of the, the five million bonding. Okay, so it got lost in the reduction from five to one. Yep. Alderman Bourne. Just from a devil's advocate position on this, this $50,000, somehow if we could find it, uh, might be worthwhile to spend just from a liability standpoint of somebody tripping and falling on, on a sidewalk that's, yep. that's heaved up. And I believe these sidewalk projects are on a, on a, on a cost share with the, with the constituents. I forgot what the percentage is, but uh, so the constituent that's having the work done pays some of it, and then the city pays the rest of it. But just from a li liability standpoint, I would like to see coming up with $50,000 somewhere because if we have one successful court case against the city because of a heave, a heave sidewalk, I think it's money well spent if we, if we can somehow find it. Okay, Alderman uh, Hanna. I, I think uh, Alderman Bourne's point's well taken. My suggestion is uh, that would be an amendment at the council floor to add an additional 50000 to the uh, bonding. Thank you, and I, I would uh, mention, I would just ask the question, have we had many $50,000 lawsuits successfully waged against us in the past 10 or 15 years? 
I, I don't know the answer to that, but uh, Alderman Ryan, you're next, but do you have an answer to that? Yes. Alderman, okay, so I'm going to, uh, Alderman Person Montemayor, please. There have not been any successful ones because we do have a program. Fair enough. Okay, thank you. And Alderman Ryan. And, and I agree with that. We have had a program in the past, and that's why they're not successful. And, uh, you know, with the city being uh, self-insured, um, especially with risk management, I mean, the answer is always no when somebody sues us. So, but, uh, yeah, we could, if we don't have a program, uh, our exposure is definitely uh, increased. Okay. Alderman Gisha, uh, uh, last topic, fi yeah, last Final slide. point, and, and if uh, a suggestion <laughs> might be that an alderman would like to pull out the budget book and find $50,000 in another program or overage in another fund or something to do that rather than bonding for it, uh, that's also an exercise to find the $50,000. And a prudent one at that. Okay, with that, uh, we will vote. It's a vote on the motion 2458. The motion is to file. Uh, an I vote will file the document. Gisha. Aye. Hannah votes aye. Hardiman. Aye. Clarence. No. Montemayor. No. Ryan. Aye. Sirk. Aye. Verhassen. No. Wongerman. No. Bourne. No. Decker. Aye. And an abstention for the chair. Except the chair's going to have to win. Two, three, <laughs> four, right? We've got uh, six to five, six no's. I'm sorry, six yeses and five no's. The chair does not have to vote. Okay, so uh, the motion passes. This uh, document will be filed. Uh, no. Next item is a discussion uh, of the content or data of the next committee of the whole meeting. So this, what this uh, conversation is about is do we want to meet one more time between now and April 10th on any particular subject or do we want to adjourn sine die tonight? Sunny day. Uh, member uh, Verhassel. Yeah, uh, Mr. Chair, we've talked about this here before the meeting and over the last few days, but I would really appreciate an opportunity to uh, talk regarding the pay plan prior to leaving the council here in April. Okay, and the uh, along with Human Resource Director Angela Payne's assistance. Okay, is that how does the body feel about that? I'm seeing some head nods. Alderman Gisha. Just a suggestion, Angela's new here. I know she's dug in and done a wonderful job, but I think, uh, I know she's working on this project and I don't believe it's completed. She can perhaps answer for herself, perhaps giving her time to come to some sort of conclusion might be helpful. Uh, Alderman Hanna, uh, you're, you're live. Okay, thank you. Uh, and I think that uh, Alderman Verhass has put a lot of hard work into it. And when he becomes citizen for Haslam, I think his input would continue to be welcomed by Angela and the human resources. So this is not lost, the hard work that you put into it. And I would hope that we take this up relatively early in the new council year. And I, mean, I guess, if I may, Mr. Chair, uh, I just wanted to add, I, the purpose of the uh, discussion would be purely to give Angela some direction. Uh, take a prim preliminary view of the, the pay plan, some of the high points and low points, and give her some direction moving forward. She's got a big task of a header, and I think it would be useful to her to have some direction from this group sooner rather than later. Okay. Uh, all the person claim us. Thank you. I, I think because this group is going to be disbanding, I mean, as far as I would see it more advantageous if we do it in the new council year, uh, because the, that group will have to be responsible for the pay plan uh, in their decisions and... Uh, you know, whatever implications it has. I think it, you know, we can wait uh, with Citizen for Hassel's input. Okay. Alderman Sir, thank you. Yeah, I appreciate the efforts that Alderman has put in, but I think the, the proper avenue for this thing would be to go to salary and grievance first and have the salary and grievance committee kind of review the program and kind of fine tune it and then that referred for that to the council and to the committee of the whole. And I, I, I want to express, thank you, Alderman Sirk. I want to express that uh, all the person for Hassel and I have been talking about this for a month or a month and a half. And so I feel uh, sort of obligated uh, because he's got some ideas. He feels strongly about wanting to share it. The calendar has ganged up on us along the way. Uh, so I, but I don't, want to, I don't want to call a meeting and then not have a quorum and not have him have the audience. So I really do ask uh, the indulgence of the committee and see if, if, uh, if we set a date that seems appropriate for people, could we get, uh, could we get eight to show up? 
but but there's no sense calling it if, if there's just not the hunger for it. Alderman Montemayor. I, I'll show up. Okay. Just to clarify, Mr. Chair, this actually went through salary and grievance back on October 30th, so it was actually passed from that committee onto this committee. So it actually, yeah. to Alderman Turk's comment, our group of five has reviewed the document already. Okay. Thank so you. I guess we'll leave it at that. I'll, 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 set, I'll, set, an, uh, I'll set a meeting, uh, and hopefully we'll be able to get eight people. Did you still want to speak? Okay, I'll show up. Okay. All right. So I will, I will call a meeting on the pay plan because I feel I think we owe it to uh, Alderman Verhasso because it has been on our docket for a while. So uh, we'll do that. We'll pick a date. Um, under adjournment, I would uh, entertain a motion to adjourn. Uh, moved and seconded. And then under discussion, I'd just like to say a couple of things. So what, I, what we took away from tonight is we're in a pickle. We're in a $1.7 million pickle that because of the conservatism of Director Hansen is probably more, it could be as high as a $2.4, $2.5 million pickle. Uh, and that money's got to come from somewhere. We don't think there are any rabbits to be pulled out of the hats. So um, my advice to the citizens is you've got two really good mayoral candidates that are going to spend some time in front of a microphone in front of you. So my recommendation would be, would be to put these, all their, uh, these mayoral candidates on the spot. Ask them tough, intelligent questions about, have they done their homework? What are their creative ideas? What will they do to build a team here in the city uh, among the uh, city employees? And not just what will they do to cut costs. We need that. But what will they do to grow revenues? Uh, and remember, uh, on election day, elections have consequences. Uh, so go out and vote your interests. Any other discussion? All in favor of adjourning? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Good night.